would like to welcome you to this program tonight. Um, this is one in our series here at the uh, Slim County Library and the uh, David O'Donoghue Arkansas Room. We have a monthly program on Arkansas or local history, and this month we uh, have two programs the same week. So we kind of lucked out. Uh, we, uh, on Thursday night, we have Mr. John Greer, who's uh, principal with uh, vice and vice president of Witzel Evans Rasco Architects of Little Rock. And uh, he is going to, uh, Mr. Charles Witzel recommended uh, Mr. Greer to uh, present this program on Charles L. Thompson. And if you don't know who Charles L. Thompson was, he was the uh, architect who designed the uh, Saline County Courthouse, uh, the Walton House, the uh, Benton State Bank Building, and the Bell Building is downtown, and uh, several buildings over in Boxside. He did the uh, administrative offices, was it Boxside at one time, the Boxside Hospital. Uh, he uh, designed the uh, Gibbons House that was at Boxside. So, uh, that's what this uh, flyer is talking about, and that's a picture of Charles L. Thompson. So uh, if you can put it on your schedule, uh, we'd like to have you this Thursday night at 6.30, uh, and he'll be talking about the architecture of Charles L. Thompson. I think you'll enjoy that. Uh, and then next month, our program is the skirmish at Hurricane Creek. Mr. Anthony Rushing will be talking about the uh, Civil War battle that took place at Hurricane Creek. and. Uh, Hope that you can come to that. That's in July the 19th. And then in August, I'll be presenting a program. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but this is the 175th uh, birthday of Swain County. Swain County will be 175 years old on November the 2nd. And uh, I'm presenting a program on 175 years of Swain County history. And that will be on August the 23rd, I believe it is. And I uh, hope you can make it to that because we're going to have a lot of uh, pictures to show and, and we'll go through the whole complete history of Saline County up to the present. Uh, tonight our guest is uh, Mr. Robert Edwards. Uh, Mr. Edwards was uh, uh, born in uh, the base hospital at Barksdale Air Force Base in Bossier City, Louisiana. He was reared and educated in Shreveport, Louisiana. And he uh, uh, Enlisted in the Air Force in 1968, and uh, he gave me a whole list of things here. <laughs> uh, 73, he moved to Plano, Texas. In 74, he went to Shreveport. He was hired by the Federal Aviation Administration in 1978 in Shreveport, Louisiana. And uh, he uh, returned in 1990 to uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, as the FAA manager for the radar office in Tower, and moved his family back to Benton, Arkansas and um, he's been here uh, since that time and uh, has lived in Benton for 30 years, minus two and a half when he was, went back to Monroe. He's a genealogist, historian, and photographer. He's a member of several genealogical and historical societies. Veterans and elected an adjutant of the David O'Dowd Camp, which recently won the top camp award. He's elected lieutenant commander of the Arkansas Division of Sons Confederate Veterans in May of 2010. He served as Vice President of the Schubert House Historic Park in Benton. He's a life member of the Saline County History and Heritage Society with two articles published in the recent edition of Saline. And he's a charter member of the Benton Historic Commission and currently serves as the chairman of the Benton Historic Commission. So we're very pleased and honored. I was uh, had a speaker and I was in a tight bind, but Robert came through for me and he agreed to do this. So I really appreciate him helping me out and presenting this program. And I don't even think we'd have this turnout if, if the other guys showed up. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate him doing this and I know you're interested in Benton history. So let's give Robert a good hand. We appreciate him. Well, I guess we just go ahead and get started. I am the chairman of the Benton Historic District Commission. We were started in 2008. The reason I'm going to talk so fast is because his computer takes a lot of time through these slides and mine does. So we have nine, nine members of the, on the commission, and they're listed here. You see five with asterisks. This is still a charter member. Uh, with nine people, the ordinance said that we would rotate. 
served three years, so we had to write the number one on three pieces of paper, the number two on three pieces of paper, number three on, and we drew numbers out. I got a two. So I'm still on there. My term expires at the end of at October this year. Uh, Brad Jordan's a student. Uh, he's graduated. He's working on a graduate degree in, in uh, government history. Darrell Wood is a contractor. He does home restorations as well. Shannon Miles, I think probably half of you, if not all of you, know Shannon, the local man that's uh, deep roots and a lot of knowledge of, of, of Benton and Benton's history. He's also a director of the Royal Theater. So we're, we're fortunate to have him. Dushan is a uh, architect with the Corps of Engineers, so we do have an architect on the committee. Uh, Virginia White, longtime resident, uh, uh, her husband, uh, and she owns the property in the district. Uh, Kevin Malone's the owner of Paradise Pets. He's got two buildings in the historic district. Peggy Robertson's been here like forever. C.W. Lewis is her grandfather. And uh, she and Dale own property adjacent to the district. And Gary Ballard is with the Saline County Coordinator for the GIS, which is Global Information System, that he does lots and lots of things to help us out with the mapping. So we're fortunate to have this group. Uh, in the beginning, we were a new commissioner, a new commissioner, a new commissioners. There's a lot of first for everyone. Uh, we had a lot of enthusiasm, and we had a desire to do good. We didn't have a charter. We didn't have any city ordinances. We didn't have any boundaries. We didn't know where to start. Or how to start. We didn't have any budget, we didn't have any resources. We couldn't hire consultants or surveyors. We had no written history of the city of Benton. We had a lot of folks that could tell you a lot about Benton. The only thing is, when I asked them, I said, when was that? You say, well, I don't know. <laughs> we also didn't have a photograph album of downtown. Well, since the beginning, Being a new commission it has allowed us to function independently. There was no one that had been there before to tell us don't do it that way. So that was kind of fun. And as new commissioners, we got to know one another and we learned what the strengths in the, uh, of each person was and we tried to play to those. There was a lot of firsts, but I told them that one of the things that I had learned with the Federal Aviation Administration is that a challenge provides you an opportunity to excel. So there was a lot of challenges which gave us a lot of opportunities. We didn't have a charter, but we were able to develop one real quickly. We formed a little three-person subcommittee, and on one meeting, by the next meeting, we had a charter. There was no city ordinances, but we have them now. Ordinance number 30 of 2008 actually established the historic district and the commission. And then ordinance number 5 of 2009 is what I call the preservation ordinance, and some people like to call it the protection ordinance. But it sets out what the property owners can and cannot do with the property. And there's a great rumor that we're out here to keep people from doing things to the building. We're not. We're not the pretty for lease. We have a bright red building downtown. What we don't want to do is see a neon sign. We don't want to see a lot of things done to the front surface, what you see. What you do in the back is your business. What you do in the interior, that's fact. And the same applies to the National Register. There's a great misconception that your property gets placed on the National Register for historic places. Your hands are tied from that day forward. That also is not true. The National Register for Historic Places is simply an honorary thing. If you do something that would destroy the integrity of the building that was placed on it, of course it's going to happen to you to be taken off the National Register. But they don't tell you what to do or how to do it. And we're the same way. All right. We didn't have any defined boundaries, but we asked the Arkansas Historic Preservation Program, and they came and helped us. They helped us establish what would be the best district. We didn't have any budget or, or financial resources, but we've corrected that. In 2010, the city council did give us a budget, and uh, we were, did have to modify it amend it. But we have some money to operate with. No written history of the city. That's a work in progress. We're working on writing some history of the city. And the photograph album, I call it a work in progress because I want old photographs, but every building in the historic district has been photographed by Kevin Malone and myself and sometimes five or six times for different angles, different views, sometimes inside the building. So we have a photograph album. People always know why a historic district. 
to preserve the heritage. Benton is unique. There's no other town in America like Benton. And there's no other buildings downtown in any other place like there are in downtown Benton. You go anywhere you want to, you will not find Benton's buildings in that town. So we're unique. So, it also tells us where we came from, or where our ancestors or the people before us came from. And one of the things I get to tell everybody that some of y'all don't get to say, we chose to live here. We moved here in 1981. FAA gave me an opportunity to get into management, but I had to go back to Louisiana to start, so we left. In 1990, I came back and took over the Little Rock Control Tower, and we moved back to Benton. So not only did I choose to live here once, I chose to live here two times. Benton is wonderful. You folks that have been here for, I've been here for a year, you folks that have been here longer than that, have made Benton a great place to live, with great school, and great, you know, it's really a good place to live, great neighborhoods. All right, so the how, to preserve right here, how, how we got to where we are, and who we are, or who were before us. A historic district will help preserve and protect our architectural treasures. I know in a minute, if Time for bit. I've got to, at the end of this slide, in case we run out of time, what we've lost. Uh, to provide stability throughout changing times. Would y'all agree that right now may be considered a period of changing times? But if you go downtown and you walk around and you say, or you just look, there's some stability that's been here. It also provides an anchor for future generations. A lot of bill has been there 100 years. When somebody comes into a town when buildings are over 100 years old, they say, wow, they didn't just throw this up and we'll be gone tomorrow. These people came to make a home and to stay for a while, and they're still here. The historic district also provides a sense of belonging. And I think it's kind of neat to walk back town, because I live down there, so I can walk back town. And it's also to promote economic growth. You say, how does the historic district promote economic growth? through heritage tourism. I don't know if you noticed it, but our commission has got a sign now, and we're working on buying some more. We've been accepted into Preserve America program by the First Lady. In 14 months, the commission went from nothing to being uh, a certified local government. Well, we, we, we nominated the district to the National Register of Historic Places. The state approved it. We've been accepted to the National Register of Historic Places. We applied for a certified local government and got that and said, what did that do? It got us $3,500 last year from the state to send people to training and to some seminars to learn more. Uh, uh, so we, we nominated the National Register, we accepted, we got a certified local government, and we, we applied to the Preserve America program. And so the First Lady, Michelle Obama, did send the mayor, 5 by 7 glossy of herself, and a nice letter of acceptance. So we're in the process of purchasing more time for the Preserve America program. Folks that come to a place to see something generally spend the night. Folks that go to a ball game don't always do that. Many times they do. But. So heritage tourism will promote economic growth and it will also increase property values. Our in 2009 went up 8%, 2000, I mean 4%. 2008, they went up 8%. The rest of Pulaski County had decreases in property value last year and in 08. So, are we helping those downtown? I hope so. Colonial Planners just recently had a fire. I went to Teddy Wilson. It was in the middle of tax season. I told, told you busy, here's my car. But before you think about tearing that building down, let me tell you this. If you invest $25,000 in a project to renovate that building and restore it, we can get you a 45% tax credit. I think you're an accountant. I don't have to. I'll get you 20% from the feds. I'll get you 25% from the state. One request approved both by the state, and you get 45% tax. So we're working on restoring the colonial cleaner. So we can do things to help, and there's reasons. All right. Family, we didn't know where to start. You see this picture. It's kind of like, where do you start with all this? So we got the Arkansas Historic Preservation Program. They wanted to do just a, a courthouse and a couple of blocks around the courthouse. And we said, no, we got more properties than that. So we came on and caught Severe Street and caught River Street, which I probably should have gone this around here. This is a, 
the bus, uh, Walter Building, Buckingham Building, and the Royal Theater. So that is basically the district. You got Market Street coming into town, Main Street, and East Street with South and Severe. Severe, South. So that's the district. And here's another old picture that kind of resembles that. So, Downtown business have been included. Accounts, apartments, our studios, attorneys, automobiles, auto parts, auto repairs, bakery, banks, barbershops, beauty salons, banks, Miss Bobby Flint, we had two. Steve did a paper on one of them, I got it over there. Uh, cafes, cleaners, clothing stores, cottages, dentists, doctors, department stores, drug stores, feed stores, paternal hall, funeral home, furniture stores, garages, gas stations, glass company, grocery stores, apartment stores, a hospital, hotels, investment companies, insurance agencies, jewelry stores, libraries, library, lumber, men's clothing, mercantile, newspaper, office supplies, optometry, paint stores, pawn shops, photographs, clothes, pool halls, five, rain tiles, one of the five pool halls, I've been. <laughs> Post office has been downtown twice. Printers. Real estate agents, restaurants, shoe stores, shoe repairs, tailors. We even had a man who was Taylor, T A Y L O R, but Taylor, T A I L O R. That's his dad. Uh, theaters, tile, tile companies, tire stores, undertakers, variety stores, liquor stores, and a community restroom. Does anybody know what a community restroom was? No. Mr. Steve, and I. I got it in here. I don't know why it didn't show up, but this is all compliments of your Saline County Library. Mr. Steve has this on microfilm. As you can see in this 1925 phone book of the Benton, there's a community restroom that's on South Park. That had a phone in it. That's what gets me the phone over the street. <laughs> but it didn't give an address. I really don't know if it's over the historic district or not, but I thought maybe some of y'all could help. Anybody know about a community restroom? I don't know if it was a place to sleep or a place to go to the bathroom. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> banks. We had banks since before 1904. I cannot tell you when the first bank was, but I know I've sat canceled checks prior to 1904. We had the Bank of Benton. That was on the corner where the Sterling store is, where the Dollar General is today. At Benton Bank and Trust, Benton State Bank, now we at Benton Savings and Long, at Citizens Bank, Farmers and Merchants Bank, First National Bank, People's Bank, which is in the Walton Building, and the Saline County Bank, and the Union Bank of Benton. Yes, the Union Bank of Benton was downtown. It's not in downtown now, but this bank here is down downtown. Now, now this is downtown. We had barbershops including. Black's Barbershop on North Main and Benton Barbershop and some barber with no name, but he was in the phone book in 1950. <laughs> Wilson Barbershop, White Way Barbershop, Herds, South Market at River, Benton Bar, and Bill Barber. So we had a lot of barbers at Irving and Kent. We had a lot of beauty shops. There have been more beauty salons at beauty shops than any other business. <laughs> downtown area. And there's six down there now. And that little bitty six block area, there's six beauty shops down there now. <laughs> cafes, including the Benton Cafe. Do you, anybody know where the Benton Cafe was? That one. How about the Benton Sandwich Shop? Blue Bell Cafe? Broadway Cafe. Where was it? And Castleberry Cafe, Home Runch Room, La Grand, Lone Star, and a bunch of hands on the Grand Post Office, and Streetcar Diner. Cleaners, it's uh, all these cleaners. And the only thing I have, I have an ashtray from Cecil's. <laughs> Cecil's Cleaning. All right. The Wama Commercial House and the McPherson Hotel are the two oldest hotels. I've read in one of the books that the, Sam, that the 
Tom Peck or Sam Peck was the first hotel, but I can't find where it is, so consequently, I didn't include it in the historic district for fear of being on Edison or military or down by the railroad yards. There were three down by the railroad. There was the Boyd, the Goodyear, and the Thompson Hotel. And they were in 1922 phone book. You could look those up, and they were down at the Mopac station. Theaters, the Imp Theater, became the Royal Theater. Anybody know what the Imp stood for? Motion. Motion pictures. And then the Palace Theater. And then the Palace Theater became Arcola Bottling, or at least they sold $10,000, 10,000 shares of stock for a bottling company. And the article in the paper said that the surf room was going to be in the basement and it act like it was. Then it became the city auditorium. Then it became the play palace. Then it became Benton Recreational Hall. Then the Panther Den. Then Celine County, County Library now is a vacant building. The new theater. Anybody been to the new theater? Where was it? Where the, okay. Victory Theater. <laughs> was it upstairs? No, I remember it downstairs in that little bitty building. Uh, it's in the Bell Building, on the corner. Yeah. Okay. And we had a bunch of undertakers. Not just Ashby. Ashby started out on West South Street, and then he moved up to North Market. He had Benton Furniture and Undertaking. <laughs> What? I'm going to show you a picture, just in case you didn't believe it. At Edward Samuel Funeral Home, they were in the Walton Building. And he had Sims Funeral Home, which... Uh... All right, oldest business. Now, per the Benton Courier, and you can look this up in that Centennial Edition. It's on page 104, column 4, it's at the bottom of the page. I don't know why newspapers do this, but they didn't tell me who the oldest building, but the second oldest building is where Bush Drug Company is located. It was erected in 1883 by F.W. his Frederick Wilhelm Bush. His drugstore was known as the Iron Palace, getting its name from the Iron College. All right. Will it go backwards? Please go backwards. It says the oldest brick building is the hotel on the corner of Maine and South. You had missed the... You have not missed a streetcar diner yet. No. All right. If you look at the top, now when we start looking at these pictures of old buildings, look at the tops. Look at the pediments. Look at the windows. Even the vents. See, that's got 11 little pediments at the top and four vents and some arched windows. This picture from the 40s shows the LeGrand Hotel with those 11 pediments, but there's another building been added next to it. The arch, the, the arch windows match. The pediments, though, are twice as many. I believe the La Grand Hotel to be that Walmart Hotel or the Walmart Commercial House. Go backwards. Go back. Go back. I don't know if you can read this or not. That says Commercial House. Over here on the side, it's either D.H. or G.H. Walmart. It said bran and hay and salt. I believe that to be the oldest building in town right there. And then a fire destroyed also Highway 67. <coughs> you notice that the side on the pole says Highway 67 and Main Street is not one way. And a fire destroyed it and I'm told the fire only destroyed the upstairs and that this was salvaged. Now, there is a door on the back, similar to the door that was in there. Of course, the arch window has been replaced with plate glass. But I believe that to be the only thing. And that's why I'm very interested in working with Mr. Wilson to see if we can't get that building restored. This is the Iron Palace. Marlo Bush was gracious enough to let us borrow this picture. This is the Bush Drug Store, the second oldest building in eight, uh, from 1883. 
And that, that's the way, y'all, but the reason I'm showing it is because this is that same building. So if you're standing at Regis Bank looking across the street, this is what you're seeing. Now, I'm going to show you later the Hughes building that was built in 1908. And this is the end of the Hughes building. It too had burned. And you see this huge thing. We're going to eventually put three more buildings in there, maybe four. That's what the Iron Palace looks like. It's got the same pediments on the top. Even in this old picture, you can see two vents around the opening of that pediment, that brickwork. So that's the two vents, and so still standing, 127 years old. J.K. Bell Building originally had a central entry. It was built by James Knox Bell's Mercantile Store in 1916. Steve's got a lot of neat stuff Designed on that. Designed by Charles Thompson. Huh? Designed by Charles Thompson, the architect. It was real pretty. The original design is very pretty, and there is a photograph of that floating around. Virginia White had it, and I didn't get to take it home with me, so I didn't get to copy it. But. And it shows the date on it. It had a central opening archway. But I did find in newspaper ads that 1916, J.E. Mickle had a cash store there. 1922 was the palace breaking. 51, it was the Victor Creator. In 59, Jingles had a grocery store in there. By 63, it was Jingles Bargain Annex. 79, it was Steel's Coffee Shop. 89, it was Smokehouse Barbecue Kitchen. In 99, it was Joe's Diner. 2090, Sharon's Diner. Today, I think Gary don't, it, but it's still a diner. In the original picture, and if you drive around and look at this side of the building, in the original picture, that was not squared off. It was fortified off, so you could look down River Street. And this side matched. So you had five windows across the top and one big archway door with a date over the door and a central <coughs> entry, not two buildings. I got to find that picture again. All right. Huh? <laughs> The Bank of Benton, I believe, was the first Benton, possibly the first bank we had in Benton. And this is from the Saline County Our Heritage, that little brown 5 by 8 book. It dates this at 1896. I can't refute this. There's a couple other pictures in there that are also dated 1896 that I can refute, but not this one. If you'll notice, Undertaker's Goods and Coffins, Dr. Ashby worked out of the back of that building. I showed you that he moved on to 106 Market. I think he worked out of the back, and there's a, uh, some other photographs that show staircases going up the back of that building. First picture I showed you had that bank in it. Now, you notice the top of that bank has a very prominent parapet up on the top. Here's an old street scene of Benton. If you'll notice the courthouse clock tower is present. We know that was built around 1902. They laid the first brick in 1902. I don't know when the clock tower was built. Maybe in 1903. But 1902, 1903. This is not the Jingles building. That was torn down and a new building was built in 1915. But that bank building is there in 1905, before. And uh, First National Bank is missing. And it was built in 1909. So there's the Bank of Minton. Here's another one. It's a better picture. And it shows the Walton building in 1904. That building's already standing. The courthouse is there, and that's already standing. So, Also, look real close right there, and it says People's Bank. Then uh, it became Sterling Stores, and then the building you all recognize today. Sometime between being a sterling store. See, the parapet's still up there in the 40s, but it's not there today. All right, 1904, we have reliable information that says that the Walton put this building on the corner. It's been used as a hardware store, grocery stores, as well as a home to a bakery, banks, cafes, paint store, Sherwin Williams was been in there, Tyrus Goodyear, Curtis Ferguson started down there on the end. Uh, been cosmetic. Merle Norman's been in there. Office, the Walton office supplies were in there for years and years and years. 
and of late he's been in martial arts in J. Undertaker. J. Boda Holloman sold undertaking supplies from the second story. It's a very prominent building, and I think you all recognize it. Date that to 1904. Uh, the other building, 1908, was uh, the Ashby Building. I'm not sure if Ashby Undertaking ever occupied that. I'm told that Dr. Ashby was even upstairs over the Bank of Benton Building, which is down the Dollar General. That may have been built as an income property, just to. But here we see it as back with the uh, Benton Supply there. Uh, and again, you can look at the uh, you can look at the pediments at the top. Here you see Ashley 1908. Same pediments as in that other earlier picture. So the Ashley building is where uh, the Dollar Store is in. Dollar Store is in. Yes, Dollar Store is in two buildings. The Bank of Benton building is on the corner, and this is adjacent to it. But the Dollar General is in two buildings. This building is no longer here, but it was one of the older buildings, and, and the reason I showed it, because after the fire that destroyed it, a smaller building was built. Now you notice that it has a large entry across down Main Street, and the smaller entry on South Street. So when that building was lost to fire, the smaller building was built back facing South Street and Jack and Jill was put in there and the vacant lot eventually became a uh, city park. The other huge building was built across the street. That building faces Main Street. The other building sits over here and faces, but they're not directly across, but they were both built in 1908 and this one has Benton Furniture and Undertaking in it. <laughs> you read that? Right next to the hotel. There's the building today. It says used 1908. Oh, thank you. That's great. I don't know if I can do two hands at once. Okay, there's the huge 1908. So it was Benton Furniture and Undertaker, then Sparks Department Store, and now it's a retail store. Okay, from 1908 we go up to 1913. We had two buildings in 1913. The first one sits on the corner, and it's the Stinson Building. And that's the nameplate on the front that faces Market Street, and to get to the date you have to go around to Severe Street to the smaller side entrance. And I... It was subdivided in, from the 1915 uh, uh, Sanborn fire maps, which Steve, Mr. Purdue, also has here in the library. The building shows, the, the, the back half of that building was a photography studio, so it probably was built with a dual purpose in mind, and that's why the entrance off of Severe Street has always been there. So, with that nameplate over the top, I'm convinced that that entrance was probably there originally for that photography studio. Really, both of them? The odd fellas too? The other building in 1913 is the odd fellas building. Which stands, and you can see there, it is 1913. It was originally the odd fellas lodge, but they, up, up, they met upstairs and they leased them downstairs. 1915, we have this Caldwell building which is Jingles. Most people remember this and they still refer to this building as the Jingles Department Store building, but it was originally built by Caldwell, Caldwell and his name is on the top of that building. Then you have the Kelly building from 1917, which has had a number of things today. It's got Merle Norman wallpaper for less. And uh, David Prater, who was one of our commissioners, owns that building and he has the wallpaper store. Uh, the other Hughes building, Hughes built three, two of them on Main. This is the one that's obscure that nobody knows about, or very few. It housed the Farmers and Merchants Bank. You look at the, up here you see it says 1919. It's set right 
there. Now here's that Caldwell building. Here's Bush Drug Store. Here's Bush Jewelry Store. Here's the Farmers and Merchants Bank and their streetcar diner. Mr. Fred Burton has that picture of two of them hanging in his office, or hanging in the clerk's office. Uh, he, he tells me all the time he got it from the GAN. I've been through almost every picture at the GAN. I hadn't found it yet, but we're still looking. But, and then there's that huge building at Myron. So, and here's the bank where Regent Bank sits. Okay. You see that being filled in. Now, here's the bank. You're standing with your back at Regent looking across the street. That was the wagon yard. Remember the, how prominent the courthouse was? The wagon yard being Time's marching on. I can't read the, the plate on that car, but I want to say that's that's a that's a late early 30s vehicle, and I, I tried my best to read that license plate. Uh, there's also U.S. Highway 67 sign on the pole <laughs> right there, and uh, South Street's not one way either. There's that building today. That's why you don't see 1919 as used. Now, when we did the nomination to the National Register of Historic Places, this, this building is, is in the historic district. It's on the list of buildings nominated, but it has an asterisk by it as NC, non-contributing. Because of that facade, and uh, they call it a slip skin or something like that, because of that facade, they put the asterisk says it could be in the district, but it's going to be a non-contributing member. But if it would go back to that, they would take that slip cover off and, and return it to that, then it'd be a contributing member. Sir? Yes, sir. And uh, if you look real good, and uh, I think that first picture is the best picture. <laughs> First picture is bigger. Cat beer, hot dogs, and beers. <laughs> Colonial bread on the screen door. And in the real picture, that's a guy, he got he shoot poop in a white t-shirt. <laughs> so, yes sir, it was a poo hop. I think we got one last building, 1924, Martin Building. Is this the Broadway Hotel? Freddie, is this where your uncle lived? No, the Bruins are still up here, up there this day. Oh, they really? Scott Thomas was up there last year. Scott Thomas, so those rooms are still up there. Now, Freddie Burton, you said your uncle lived up there? Your grandfather, your uncle, and your dad. So, and was it called the Broadway Hotel? Because there was a Broadway cafe at that address as well. And there's another picture of it here again, still operating in the 40s. And you notice now they built the bus terminal in front of it. And there it is today with Cleo's in front of it. Other little pictures, uh, everybody calls that building on the corner and said, that's Parker's Drug Store. Well, it wasn't originally, okay? That's the little building across from the courthouse where Parker's Drug Store was. And it was there probably longer than anything else. But this gives me visual evidence that it wasn't originally. Now, Mr. Brown originally was across the street from, he was on the same side as the little Grand Hotel, just down from Benton Undertaking Furniture, Benton Furniture Undertaking. <laughs> and if you notice, it's two buildings. The, the paint job kind of makes you, tricks your eye, make you think it's a single building. But if you look at the, the, the top and the pediments at the top, there's two buildings there. 
Now, this had not got anything to do with the history, history of the commission, but it's something I thought would be nice to know, to try to figure out who, who's, who has been in these buildings. So I've started a database, and Steve's been furnished me with all kind of stuff to use, like old phone books and old... So I started with this one, since Saline County History and Heritage occupies this building at 123 North Market. I said, who's trying to find out who had been in there? So you can see from the list, it was April he, that E.Y. Stinson purchased the land from the Odd Fellows, and he built the building. Then the Odd Fellows bought the building. Now I got all that out of there. That building was nominated to the, to the National Register before it was ever part of the historic district. Then the Odd Fellows in 21 sold the ground floor and Saline Hardware, uh, Saline Hardware and Furniture moved in. And they were in there from 51, 59, 63, through the 70s. And uh, the Odd Fellows were always upstairs, even in 79. Now by 89 it's Superior Trophies, 99 is the Boutique, and Beard Engineering is upstairs now where the Odd Fellows used to operate. 2002, the owners donated it by a quick claim deed to the Saline County government. And in May, the, uh, the county listed it on the National, National Register. It was refurbished in 07, and the Saline County History and Heritage Society operates there. And we have this here with us. And if anybody wants to know where I got the information, I'm trying to keep track of where I got it, too. So, Okay, once again, what we've lost. Here's that huge building again from 1908. Now, it was destroyed, and, and the owners rebuilt this little building to replace it, and the rest of that's a city block. But we lost a fourth of a city block when that building went. Is that when it burned? You gonna email it to me? <laughs> This is uh this is my favorite building that doesn't exist anymore. If you look up here, it says 1909. That's my favorite building that's not downtown. That building was built by A. B. Banks. He was a lumberman from Fordyce, and he eventually bought that Farmers and Merchant Bank as well. First National Bank sold to Benton Bank and Trust, and I have another picture that shows a very similar thing that shows Benton Bank and Trust on it. From there, it was sold to Mr. Alsabrick and became Benton State Bank. Benton State Bank did a series of renovations. They put a, a clock on it, and then they, then they closed in the front and gave it a 30s look like the Masonic Hall, left the clock out there, then they took that clock, that analog clock down, put a digital clock up, and finally they tore the building down and built what you have. Anybody know where 221 North Main is? You do? Freddie, you know where 221 North Main is? Now, not Freddie's fault now because the building on the end that says vote, vote here was, was, was a Goodyear store. And uh, the county annex was uh, Otasco. So once they left town, the county bought those buildings and uh, turned them into the voting, early voting center in the county annex. But we had a pair of twin Victorians sitting on that corner. The A.V. Martin home, I showed you the A.V. Martin building that at the Broadway Hotel. This was his home. Anybody know where 203 Northeast is? Yeah. And then the Palace Theater. I put the palace on a list of endangered buildings. To me, we have three endangered buildings in town. That was empty. It's probably the most endangered. Because it belongs to the city and nobody can afford to do anything with it. Now, I'm not advocating. So yes, sir. And it, it doesn't? I, I never was. Never knew it had a basement. I'm just going by the article I read in the paper. It said the cert room was going to be in the basement for our cola bottle.
Mr. Wise, you been in the basement? Have you seen a door that might lead to a basement? Okay. I could be wrong. I just, heaven forbid the newspaper wouldn't be after it. <laughs> <laughs> I put the super house on, on the thing too because there is a, a group and I'm the vice president of the board of directors. The funding is so limited and that building is vacant. And uh, I don't know where we're going to get the thousands and thousands of dollars we need to restore these buildings. But this one has never had heat or air, and it's starting to show some of the effects of that. And the other would be the GAN building. Now, the GAN building also has a board of directors, and it does have heating air, and it has some climate control in it, but it still has problems unique unto itself. The fact that the, and I, I, I couldn't find my picture, Sam, I apologize, but the fact that the building is bauxite, and bauxite is a soft <coughs> mineral, makes it just have inherent problems. Right now, it's shut down for water damage. So those, to me, are our three most endangered buildings. Okay, I need your help. From now on, from this day forward, when you date a picture, do me a favor. This building, this thing is dated 1896 in the caption that goes with this photograph. But see that right there? <laughs> they laid the cornerstone for that in 1902. And there's a lot of pictures showing the Mas Masonic Lodge and all their regalia forming and lining up to lay the cornerstone. I'm not going to say it was built in 02. It may have taken a year to build that big thing. But if you see that in there, don't make your picture 1896. The other thing you can look at is these are telegraph lines. <laughs> That is the Walton building. That's built in 1904. Which one you said was 1890? The Bank of Benton. This picture, the original of this picture, the caption under it says a street scene in Benton, 1896. Here's another one. Looking north on Main Street at the corner of Main and South, Benton is here in 1896. <laughs> City did have electricity, I think, and they, there's a contract, and Freddie's got all that in his records over there. Uh, 1902, they let a contract for the electricity, and they ordered 12 arc lights. That may be an arc light. Now, I'm a little bit of an electrician, but I ain't real good at what an arc light is. But, so, but that's pretty prominent right there. And this was by Hendrix Studio. So, when you're dating your old photographs, look for electricity, look for that clock tower. <laughs> and there's a difference between telegraph and telephone. Do you, do, so. Thank you very much. <laughs> Steve says we have 12 minutes for questions and... and, and 30 minutes, you're going to have to roll up a bedroll or something. Yeah. Patricia? Uh, Mr. Adams, my question is, I know you were, you know, looking at buildings, but I would like, how did you know anything about Hughes and Stinson? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Where is, what building, where the present Masonic Lodge is? What is that building? I didn't capture it. I, the la oldest photograph, I, the newest photograph I stopped was that Martin building in 1924. The Masonic Lodge was built in the 30s, and it's got that Art Deco front. Is that what you're talking about? The one where it is now. Uh, next to Sparks Jewelry. No, 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 not Sparks Jewelry. 1934. Thank you. Is that what your question was? When was it built? 34. Question. Yes, sir. I want to know if you know any ghost stories or hauntings, uh, haunted buildings. I got the most vivid imagination of anybody in this room. What do you want to know? 
Give me a bill and I'll have you a ghost story so fast, Joy. I have heard the Gant House is haunted. Gant House is not in the historic district. But <laughs> <laughs> the uh, building you were talking about with the slip on the front of it. Yes. Why will the owner of that building not remove that? Uh, probably nobody's approached it. Are you planning on it? Or? We still got a lot of other things we're doing right now, and uh, we're really not trying to interfere with owners' daily day business. Uh, uh, we're trying to make it known that we'll help them. We're trying to make it known that if uh, our state legislature in 09 passed a law for historic preservation. The federal government through the Department of Interior has for years had that incentive out there. If you invest a minimum of $25,000, the federal government will give you a 20% tax credit on your investment. In 09, the state legislature said we'll do 25% and they gave the authority to approve that to Arkansas Historic Preservation Program, who are already approving the national. The Historic Preservation Program asks you to make one request, they'll approve them for both projects and they encourage double dipping. And if you had insurance involved, they don't care where the $25,000 come from. So those are the things that we're trying to get involved with the owners with and not so much being the pretty police because I'm sure that would be a, if the owner wants to do it, we would certainly work with them to do it, but we haven't actually gone door to door knocking and saying, would you take it off? So he doesn't know anything about it yet? May or may not. Same. I know three locations for the post office, one on Military, one on Market, one on Main Street. In the Main Street, when I've seen the dedication of it, and et cetera, a dope for sale was there and all, but where was the post office before what is now, I guess, the federal building or where the Salvation Army is? Where was the original post office? It was on Market Street downtown, wasn't it? It was the federal building. Huh? No, there's one before that that was downtown. Raymond? Mr. Well, we will ask Thursday, won't we? We will ask Thursday. We have a resident post. post. Where's your daddy when I need him? Questions? Anybody else? I'll find out, Sam. I just wondered, you know, I hadn't seen any pictures. I want to say it was on Market Street. Probably. Whatever it may be worth.